Iron Maiden's album Dance of Death has one of the most controversial album artworks in the band's discography. Okay, who am I kidding? It does not. I literally don't know anyone who likes it. Yes, that's true. So, as a part of our Up the Irons series, let's take a look at the history of the Dance of Death cover art, try and place it in the context of the early 2000s and what the band has been going through at that time, and then hopefully answer the question of what actually is wrong with this artwork beyond the regular criticism of bad graphics. Here you go. Very quick before we start, as always, please do not hesitate to comment on anything you hear or see in this video, and especially if you disagree with me, because the whole point of our Up the Irons series is, of course, to start a conversation. But alright, let's do it! Since pretty much its formation, Iron Maiden have always been associated with their mascot, Eddie, who of course has been given the full body by the legendary artist Derek Riggs, responsible for some of the most iconic Iron Maiden album artworks throughout the 1980s. And so when the band found themselves on the crossroads in the early 90s, trying to adapt to the harsh realities of the rapidly changing world of heavy metal, Rod Smallwood decided to invite an artist Malvin Grant to give Eddie an updated 90s look, thus making Fear of the Dark the first Iron Maiden studio album with a non-Derek Riggs artwork. Fear of the Dark, Santiago! We of course spoke quite a lot about that in our previous episode, so I'm actually not going to go into the details of previous album artworks in this video. But just a reminder that if you are new to our Up the Irons series, there are quite a lot of episodes for you to actually check out after this one. So do it. And so when Iron Maiden reunited with Bruce Dickinson and Adrian Smith in 1999, their first album together, The Dance of Death predecessor Brave New World, was all about going back to Maiden's true form. And thus, for the very first time since No Prayer for the Dying, Derek Riggs was once again invited to provide a cover artwork for the band's studio album. Well, at least for its upper part. Yet by 2003, the euphoria from the reunion has faded away, and so the boys once again had to determine their path and show the world that this lineup was not about nostalgia, and instead is determined to move forward, once again proving the world that Iron Maiden is back and remains one of the greatest heavy metal bands to ever walk the earth. So in order to provide the album artwork for Dance of Death, which became the 13th studio album for Iron Maiden, and by the way, although it might not sound like it, actually was full of innovations and of little things which the band has never done before. Iron Maiden invited the artist David Padgett, although you of course will not find this information in the album credits. Given the album's title and the fact that although Dance of Death is not really a concept album, the concept of death and mortality is in fact the running theme throughout the record, it was actually rather obvious that David would imagine Eddie as death itself on it. And here Right away, we have the first little problem with this idea. Bro, what are you talking about, man? All the die-hard Iron Maiden fans would of course know that the figure of death, or better call him the Grim Ripper, has almost always been present on Iron Maiden artworks. In fact, it is the silhouette of the Grim Ripper which many Iron Maiden fans would immediately go and look for, trying to find it somewhere hidden in the background whenever they picked up a new Iron Maiden album, especially in the 1980s. And so having Eddie as a Grim Ripper himself right in your face was rather weird for many fans who've been following the band for a long time before that. But anyways, the original idea by David Patchett was to simply have Eddie and the Monk's silhouettes in the background, which we kind of can have a glimpse of on the Dance of Death tour poster, yet this setting felt too empty for Rod Smallwood, and here's the thing, I actually agree with Rod. Such setting, although let's be honest here, would have been much better than the final version, would still not really feel maiden enough, as we all know that 
every Iron Maiden album, and especially before Dance of Death, had a massive amount of detailing and artistry involved, over which a fan could spend hours glimpsing and trying to enjoy all the little elements of it. You know, like we do quite a lot in this series. <laughs> Actually, there was another reason why Iron Maiden could not have simply left Eddie alone there, of which neither the band nor most of the fans actually spoke of, yet which could have actually caused quite a lot of problems for Iron Maiden, and of which we will of course speak in just a moment. Oh! And so, in order to not leave Eddie alone on the cover, the band ordered to add many, many more elements to it. And we all know they did. Okay, then we have two different versions of what happened next. The official version is that the, all of the CGI figures which uh, miraculously appeared next to Eddie were added by David Patchett himself upon the Rod Smallwood's request. Yet according to some other sources, Rod Smallwood actually hired someone from IronMaiden.com to add those characters surrounding Eddie, which was then later on provided to David Patchett to make them blend into the overall look and feel of that artwork. But in fact, it doesn't actually matter, since either way, the version which has made it to Dance of Death was actually never supposed to be the final version of that artwork, and was in fact a work in progress which Steve Harris absolutely loved and insisted on using as a final one. Thus resulting in David Patchett actually pulling his name and asking to not be mentioned in the liner notes to Dance of Death, which just to quote Bruce Dickinson in his latest autobiography, I cannot blame him for. And I know I promise to not get into the details of bad CGI, but there are some things which I simply cannot resist. So here are some things which I simply cannot understand how no one noted. Or simply thought it would be okay to use it for one of the greatest heavy metal bands of all times. The genderless acrobat who has neither breasts nor even nipples clearly has its shoulder broken and really shouldn't be doing any handstands. The dude on the left has the upper part of his left leg significantly longer than the lower one, a trauma he most likely received from practicing ballet too much since he still is able to stand on just the tips of his toes. The baby who ate its own fingers does not actually sit on the wolf and is actually surfing on it, pushing its little feet through the ribs of the beast who for some reason has unnecessary extra joints in his legs and cries in agony while stepping on a snake while not actually stepping on a snake. And of course the main figure, who has multiple problems with her arm joints and the neck which makes us believe that she, in fact, is a half woman, half llama. Yet of course a very important one since she's the only one who has made it on the Dance of Death tour poster. Yet the creature who scares me the most is of course the baby, who most likely dances like Joey from France in a jazz class and, jazz hands. <laughs> and for some weird reason has six fingers on the left hand. <laughs> Yet, the bad CGI might actually not be the only reason why Iron Maiden fans are not really fond of this artwork. And in fact, I actually believe that the roots of the problem actually go much deeper than it may be seen on the surface. What? Oh, and by the way, many people actually pointed out that the whole scenery of the naked people dancing around in masks and in fact the masks themselves are very much resembling of the famous scene in the Kubrick's legendary movie Eyes Wide Shut, in which, you know, naked people dance around in masks. It cannot be. But once again, that could be just a coincidence. But anyways, by 2003, Iron Maiden once again had to raise the question of where this band is actually going to. Since let's be honest here, after an announcement of Bruce and Adrian's return, Iron Maiden could have released a pop album and still millions of fans around the world would have gone to their concerts and of course would have bought their first reunion album. And the fact that Brave New World was freaking amazing of course helped a lot. After the reunion Euphoria was gone in 2003, Iron Maiden once again had to ask themselves what is their place in the landscape of a modern style heavy metal and how exactly they will be embracing the new beginnings launched by many other metal bands. And maybe that's why Dance of Death is the first and the only album on which Iron Maiden used double bass or the album which features the first ever Iron Maiden acoustic song. And of course that longing for innovations made its way to the album's artwork as well.
And by the way, those who remember the early 2000s scene most likely would have to agree with me that at that time the world of heavy metal has been dominated, at least in Europe, by the Scandinavian style melodic death metal, with now legendary band Children of Bottom of course being on the forefront of that genre. Children of Bottom actually achieved enormous success in Europe, with their logo and especially their mascot, the Grim Ripper, being extremely popular, especially among the younger heavy metal fans around that time. And so here's the thing, if you take a look at the original version of the Dance of Death artwork and compare it to Children of Bottom's debut record, it would actually look like, like Eddie is actually trying to imitate Roy. What? And the thing is, this of course has been done unintentionally, yet Rod Smallwood, being a great manager who is deeply immersed into the world of heavy metal, would of course have noticed such similarities. And of course Rod Smallwood would never have allowed Eddie, the greatest heavy metal mascot of all time, to look like a cheap Chinese knockoff version of some other band's mascot. Iron Maiden's gonna get yeah, the coolest thing about it is that after this release it looks like the boys actually realize that they are iron maiden and they do not have to prove anything to anyone and no matter what they do and how up to date they stay they still remain one of the greatest heavy metal bands on the planet which to this day is able to release so much energy on their live shows making let's be honest here most of the young bands of today wish they had 10 percent of the talent innovation and energy iron maiden has And those who are not new to the channel of course know that I was actually supposed to see Iron Maiden this year and make an in-person interview for you guys to enjoy on the channel, yet I was not able to do so because of the war in my country. So once again, and as always, please continue supporting Ukraine in any way you possibly can by purchasing merch, watching Ukrainian YouTubers or spreading the word. And please remember never normalize in your head that the biggest war since World War II is still going on right now in the middle of Europe. But anyways, what do you guys personally think about why didn't Iron Maiden go with their original album artwork for Dance of Death? Please let us know in the comments. Oh, and by the way, I actually wanted to point out that musically Dance of Death actually makes it to maybe top 5 of my Iron Maiden albums. Mostly because of the deep personal emotional connection I have with this record. And yet still, to quote Bruce Dickinson, this album artwork is sort of embarrassing, especially for Iron Maiden. In fact, to the point that in 2003, when I bought the original CD for Dance of Death, after opening it at home, I actually thought that I accidentally bought a cheap bootleg version of the record <laughs> so bear with me I actually went to some weird CD stand yeah we still had those back in 2003 in Ukraine and bought an actual bootleg version of Dance of Death with an artwork of some fan art which I at that point thought has to be original because it actually looked more like original than the actual original artwork but anyways thank you so much for watching this short video guys and we will prevail Slava Ukraina